What's going on, everybody? My name's L-U-C-K, a.k.a. Luck, and welcome to my Embers Rekindled full mod showcase. Um, like I said last episode, we were going to set up a big factory so I could show you guys what uh, kind of your base would look like with all of the Ember stuff kind of filling it up and, you know, taking space in the in the world. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. I have a little demonstration set up for you guys, and I think it's going to be pretty cool. So first things first, I don't want to spoil the surprise. So let me jump down here and um, <clears throat> let's take a look uh, down here at the boar, right? So number one, um, I was grabbing uh, items out of the chest and just kind of lugging them up there and filling all my machines manually. <clears throat> I've now set up a piping system um, that leads them all up into here. I have these item transfers on here with filters on them. They don't seem to be uh, kind of functioning correctly. I'm not really sure why, um, but uh, such is life. <laughs> um, they, uh, yeah, these should be filtering, but for whatever reason, the pipe keeps getting stuffed up. I've tried it many different ways, many different configurations. Not really sure what's going on. So, um, yeah, we're just gonna, uh, kind of leave those be for now. Um, but, uh, I'll show you where these guys actually go, right? Um, so these actually come up to the workshop. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you guys on a tour and show you what, everything that we got going on here. Um, but this is where the ember actually comes up to, right? So we got a drawer for uh, the crystals, the shards, and the grits, right? So we have these at our disposal, ready to go whenever we need. Um, down here, um, I actually have a pipe that's pulling crystals out and sending them that way. And I'll show you where those are going in a second here. Um, so those are actually coming over to... Whoop, those are coming over here to these pressure refineries, right? The pipe comes all the way underneath and then it pops up right here and it feeds all of these pressure refineries with ember. Like I was saying uh, during last episode, I believe, it was either last episode or the episode before, you definitely want to get up to the pressure refineries as quick as you possibly can. Uh, the regular ember activator is cool and all, but the pressure refinery um, easily can double your output. It says times three. I was not able to get it up to times three, um, but it easily doubles your output. So yeah, you're definitely gonna wanna get up to the pressure refineries as fast as possible. Um, down here, I just have some fluid vessels. These are not infinite water supplies. Um, I just kind of set these up for demonstration purposes, but I have these fluid vessels feeding water up to the refineries. You'll see everything's back stuff because our system's trying to send things in and uh, they don't have any place to go, which is fine. I want this to back stuff. So yeah, um, over here we have a series of melters right? We have one for each of the uh, metals. Um, now we did that on purpose because the geologic separators give you different outputs uh, for whatever you put into them. I didn't want things getting mixed up or stuffed or, you know, backed up. So we just made one for each, right? Um, and I'll show you. We're going to throw our metals in here. Boom, boom, boom. Once they get melted down, they get sent through these pipes behind the wall, right? And you'll see... There goes one right there. And they come over to our stampers. Very cool. I love watching this do its thing. It is so much fun. I love it. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I really wish that I had covered during um, the main part of the series were beam splitters, right? These are really cool. So, <clears throat> um, let's see. This one's doing it right now, right? So it takes a ember pulse in and it sends two out right and how these guys work is the shorter little nib here right that is the receptor and the longer nibs here these are actual uh emitters right so if we take our hammer oh we already have it on us if we take our hammer you can you can link these guys just like a regular emitter right and you can also link these guys just like a regular receptor just like that <clears throat> So we have our pressure refinery feeding ember up to the cell. The cell is then splitting it off to all of our different stampers, right? This one over here, we had to feed two separate uh, inputs from the ember because this was this was sucking up a lot of ember. Uh, it was taking a lot of ember to actually get all these things melted down. Um, so we definitely had to, to give it a little more juice. Yeah. 
Um, so over here, this is our um, <clears throat> this is our uh, Dawnstone section, right? So if we come over here, let's just grab we'll grab a stack of gold and a stack of copper, right? So this is our Dawnstone uh, little part of the factory. If we insert gold and copper, boom. And I did have uh, geologic separators on here because when you put ores in, you do get an output from the geologic separator. But this is our Dawnstone setup. We have um, <clears throat> being fed, oh, this is another thing that I wish that I had covered during the main series, ember relays. These are really cool. Um, so you can actually extend the length of your ember pulse there using relays. And I'll show you that in a, in a second here. So this is sending it over to the copper cell. It's then going to this beam splitter here and this beam splitter here. And it's splitting for all of our different machines. I just love watching these do their thing. It's so cool. It is so cool. It's so much fun. Um, so this is that's where they're getting their ember from. <clears throat> Gold goes in here, gets melted down. And then copper goes in here, gets melted down. And then it gets taken out, put into the stamp. Well, it goes through the centrifuge, which uh, mixes it into Dawnstone. And then it gets taken out, put into the stamper. The stamper stamps it turns it into Dawnstone ingots. Yeah. Um, now, just for clarification, um, you can't just throw a drawer next to uh, a stamp base and it just automatically inputs to the drawer. We actually have a little bit of a piping set up here, right? Um, we have the pipe sucking out the Dawnstone and then putting directly into a drawer. Um, the only output that I can tell uh, that the stamper will actually put into, there's, there's actually two. Um, you can use the vacuum, right, uh, the item vacuum, <clears throat> which will suck items into it and then output through the back, or you can just put a bin on the bottom and it'll directly output to the bin. So basically what we have is Dawnstone getting output directly to the bin, then getting sucked out and uh, put right into our drawer. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Awesome. Um, We'll go ahead and take a look over here next. So over here, I set up a nice little area. I think it's a little over-designed. Um, I kind of went crazy with the archaic light bricks, but we have our little alchemy set up over here, right? Um, so this is where you would come in and do your alchemy, right? Uh, you could put uh, you know, all of your ingredients on the pedestals, right? Um, we'll just grab a log for that, why not? Cool. And then once you're done, uh, once you have it done, your, uh, your beam Cannon is up here, press the button, boom, does your alchemy, good to go, right? I'm not very good at alchemy as uh, as we saw through the series, uh, so I'm not gonna attempt to, to do one right now. But uh, this was another demonstration of the beam splitter, right? So if I drain this guy of power, you'll, or I mean the uh, ember relay, if I drain this guy of power, you'll see the ember getting bounced all the way over to here. Now I believe that there is no like upper range to ember, right? We could just have it go right from there over to there. The problem is you actually lose ember through uh, through the air, right? Um, so you definitely want to use the ember relays uh, when you can. So, yeah. And then you can see all of our things getting powered all at the same time. It is awesome. I love this mod. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series because I have, I definitely have. Um, uh, last three things that I wanted to talk about. There were uh, a couple other things that I didn't get to cover in the main series. We did take a look at the Wildfire Sterling. Um, apparently what this guy does, right, um, is you can stick it on the side of a machine, right, and it'll make the machine 50% um, more efficient or it cut its usage, you know, its ember usage by 50%. <clears throat> And then if you stick another one on there, it'll actually only use 25% of the ember. Um, we never figured out the boiler. Um, it kept exploding in our face and uh, I apparently didn't have a ton of patience for it. <laughs> um, the catalytic plug, that was another one that we didn't get to uh, to uh, play around with. Um, what did the book say about that? I actually forgot. Let's see. 
Catalytic plug. I remember I saw it around here somewhere. Here we go. Catalytic plugs are fantastic devices for the impatient. When hooked up to a machine, the plug doubles the speed of the machine, but only if also supplied with steam from the back, which is consumed in the process. Up to two catalytic plugs can be attached to a single machine to quadruple its speed. Attaching more will decrease their efficiency. The plugs also decrease in efficiency if attached through one or more mechanical, one more, or through more than one mechanical core. Okay. So this guy makes them more efficient. This guy makes them faster, right? I wonder if you could stick two of each on. That would be kind of cool. And then the last thing is the combustion chamber. Um, the combustion chamber, from what I can tell, let's see if it's in here. The combustion chamber, from what I can tell, um, let's see, right here, uh, does something with burnable items, right? Um, I, I can't really find anywhere in the book that's telling me what a combustion chamber actually does, right? Which is fine, because uh, it doesn't really matter. We have a whole factory set up, right? Um, I'm sure that it does something cool. I just don't know what it is. So, yeah. And there you have it, guys. So that is the uh, final mod showcase for Embers Rekindled. Um, as I noted in one of the previous episodes, there is a section of the mod that is not uh, in yet. It's not updated yet. When this becomes available, we may revisit uh, Embers just to check out what it is. So I'm going to save this world for sure, and we'll just jump back in and, and check it out when the mod actually updates. Um, but yeah, so that's that's it for Embers Rekindled. Like I said, the next Mod Mastery series is going to be uh, Immersive Engineering, um, which I'm going to I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, it was good that I did this one first because I learned a lot while I was doing it. Um, number one, I was relearning Embers as I was showing you guys what Embers was all about. And uh, what I didn't realize in my comment section was there was a lot of people who had never seen Embers before. So I kind of came into this almost like I was teaching you guys what Embers was about, but at the same time I was learning, I was relearning how to use Embers. Um, so it was definitely an experience for me. I'm glad that I did it. Um, and uh, the next series that we do, I just want to hit that so that it keeps it keeps sending Ember over there because I like it. Um, <clears throat> the next series that we're going to do, like I said, uh, and I, I'm like a broken record at this point, we're going to do immersive engineering. I'm a lot more familiar with immersive engineering, having used it um, way more recently than Embers. And um, I've gotten very, very far into the mod, right? Um, so I'm going to be able to show you guys a lot more about that one without needing to take the time to like relearn how to uh, how to actually use the mod. Um, so I hope you guys are excited for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. It was a ton of fun uh, relearning how to do embers. Um, I just I, I absolutely love this mod. I adore this mod ever since that it came out. I think it was 1.12 was the last time that embers was available. Um, so it's been a while. Um, and I just, I absolutely adore this mod. This mod is so much fun. It's so different from like all the other tech mods. Um, it's just, it, it's really, it's near and dear to me. And uh, yeah, guys, so I think we're going to wrap it up there. I didn't intend for this one to be a super long video. I just wanted to kind of show you guys what it would look like if your whole base was filled with Ember stuff. And uh, I think we kind of achieved that. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the series. Hit that sub button if you are excited for the next one, Immersive Engineering. And uh, yeah, guys, until next time, I will catch you all later. See ya.